Hey friends, welcome back to yet some more Reddit stories about entitled people, crazy people, and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to subscribe for more Reddit content if you haven't already and let's get into today's stories. Security regulations you wrote apply to you too. This was my first security gig right out of the military. Good starter job for security work. It was access control at a medium-sized aircraft engine factory. A friend of mine worked HR there, but he also held the title as head of security, so he offered me a job and I accepted. One of the biggest rules were ID checks. Apparently, a few years prior, a couple of people had gotten in with photocopied IDs, so after that, we had to physically check that the ID was plastic. We did this by touching it. Now, do access control enough and you start to memorize people. We didn't check those IDs by touching them because we knew them, and if they had been fired, we would have gotten a notice. Well, that angered the head of HR, so she set some new rules. She wasn't the head of security, but security fell under HR, so she kind of was. All IDs must be checked, no exceptions. No non-employee is allowed through the gate without a notice signed by her or the head of security, and has to be submitted 12 hours prior to their entry, like for people scheduled for interviews. Visitor badges assigned without prior approval can only be done for normal deliveries, like the post office or FedEx. Anyone who violates it will be reported by security to HR for a security violation. That was fine and dandy. We really didn't care. Everything went smooth for about a month until that one day. Here she comes to the gate, but she isn't driving. Her husband is. It is raining, and I mean flood level raining. I asked her husband for his ID and he says he didn't have one. She saw where this was going and tried to stop me. He was only there to take her in because it was raining and she didn't want to walk from her car to the building and ruin her outfit. That's when I threw the rules back to her. I didn't have a security notice for him so I couldn't assign a badge and couldn't let him in. She tried the, but it's only a hundred yards, which again I reminded her of the rule she set down. She actually said, well I'm your boss. Technically she wasn't. We are going in anyways. Which I replied again, her rule, that any breaches of policy must be reported as a security violation. So there she is, dressed to the nines, forced to walk, without a jacket, to the building, a hundred yards in the rain to get to her office. Why didn't we lend her a security rain jacket, you ask? Because she said there wasn't enough money in the security budget to buy them. Later that day, she modified the rules that on drop-offs, security has full discretion to allow someone entry for that purpose. We also got our rain jackets two weeks later, and she never bothered security again. Downstairs neighbor demands we walk normal. So we do, and she hates it. We've been living in this apartment for three years. It's cozy. The building is around 20 years old, and though the appliances and wall paint and carpets have been replaced, the floor has not. It's painfully thin. Every step we take creaks and groans, and it's annoying. Living on the third floor, we know it's got to be even more so for whoever lives below us. So we've done our best to be mindful of their comfort and try not to make too much noise. We had a new downstairs neighbor move in a couple months ago, and she is not convinced that we are literally tiptoeing around our apartment. Every time I get home and close my door, she's banging on my floor with a broom or something. Every time I cross the living room, banging. Every time I vacuum, banging. Every time my dog chews on a bone, she bangs on the dang floor and it scares my poor dog. We've been living on eggshells trying to be courteous, but she's driving us mad with her insistent banging every time we take a step. I guess she had finally had enough because she came upstairs to yell at us the other day. You are too loud. You need to be courteous and walk normal. You have neighbors, she yells. She almost looked like she was about to cry. It was disturbing. We felt bad. My husband tried to explain that, ma'am, we do our best to be quiet, but these floors are really old and they creak. We're not stomping or jumping or running. We're living, but we'll continue to be considerate. She was not impressed with his answer and continued to argue. Well, I lived on a first floor before and my other neighbors weren't loud like you. It's so loud and my job is so stressful and I want you to stop stomping. I don't want to be a mean person, but I really think you're too loud. So you know what we agreed to? to walk like normal people. Okay, okay, we'll walk normally, we said. This is exactly what we had been doing, nothing different. So she still bangs on the floor and gives us nasty looks, 
But we are being normal people who walk normal and don't stomp around. Our dog is a normal dog who chews on bones and walks from his bed to his food bowl and gets excited when it's time for walkies. We are so normal. We'll be moving in the next month, so it's no skin off my back. Hope the next tenant doesn't have kids. Or maybe I do. And then she'll finally understand that we are normal people who walk normal. Maybe she'll miss us. Edit. Thank you all for the stories, input, and advice on how to be better neighbors. Some are pretty insightful. However, considering she banged on the floor again today while I was running the bath, I'm not too concerned with wearing slippers all day around the house or padding the carpeted floors with noise-canceling material. Angry people like being angry. I'm excited for the move-out day when people will constantly be walking around and moving heavy furniture. I don't doubt that the floors are probably thin and it's probably easy to hear other people. It's unfortunate, but there's not much you can do about that. So I don't exactly blame her for being annoyed about it, but the way she's reacting to it is just a bit unhinged. And she's obviously exaggerating about the kind of sounds she claims she's hearing. She should be able to tell the difference between excessive noise and just normal living sounds. But instead she's taking it out on her upstairs neighbor when it's obviously just a noise isolation issue with the building. Don't sue. We'll let you come onto our property to fix your sewer line. The house I grew up in was built on the side of a hill. Great views, but the geography posed some challenges for the city utilities, sewage in particular. Their solution was to put all the houses on the hill in what was called a shared line. Essentially, one big pipe that ran through all of our backyards, just below the house's basements. Effluent would flow out from the houses into the shared pipe, and then down the hill to the city sewer line by the bottommost house. When we moved in, we were at the highest point that it was possible to build on and still be part of that shared sewer line. But a few years later, someone bought a lot just over the crest of the hill and linked up with ours, without being part of the planned community that had an HOA that took care of the sewer line, among other things. And in fact, they did so without the HOA's approval. And so for the next two decades, my family would be the subject of near-constant harassment over the state of the sewer, their end of the line was lower than ours by just enough that it would stop flowing and clog, often backing up into their basement bathroom and shower. They'd accuse us of diverting our effluent to their line, because I guess we were some kind of plumbing wizards. Now the reason nobody built a house on that part of the hill during the original development was that the soil was unstable, something hydrology related. Sure enough, over the years, that house would occasionally separate from the hill and slide down a couple of inches. But our neighbors had connections in the code enforcement agency, so the place never got condemned like it should be. They just had to shore it up and reconnect all the utilities. The thing is, the further down the house moved, the steeper the negative incline was from their sewer connection to our junction box, making the clogs and backups even worse. At one point, it got so bad that their sewer barely flowed. Some days, it got completely clogged. Somehow, this was our fault. They spent the next year calling us every time they tried to flush a toilet and crap came out in their downstairs shower. They called a plumber who said they had to redo part of their shared line. And to do it, they'd have to bust through our two-story masonry wall so they could get a backhoe onto our property and dig out the line. Of course, we had issues with this. We said no. You will not come onto our property and tear it up with a big-ass piece of construction equipment. Hire human laborers or something. But instead, they hired lawyers who started slinging paper around. According to them, we were in violation of state law that specifically gave an implied easement, granting a homeowner access through another's property to maintain their own. So we hired lawyers of our own, who said that we basically had a choice. We could win the case but pay a ton of money, or just let it happen. Either way, we'd be screwed. But they pointed out one important fact. That 20-year-old masonry wall wasn't in the greatest shape anyway. So a few months later, we presented them with the bill for $75,000 for the rebuilding of the wall, installation of a new set of stairs, replacement of the entire wrought iron fence that separated the two properties, resodding, replacement of ornamental plants and shrubs, and some minor repairs to our sewer which they had borked up while relaying their pipes. I'm not a general contractor, but my guess is that they could have hired pick-and-shovel labor to dig out that pipe and replace it with a new one, for a fraction of that price. But no, 
They had to have a giant caterpillar tread machine do it. They balked, but then we handed them a Xerox copy of the letter their lawyers had sent us, with pursuant to paragraph blah blah of the common code of blah blah blah, citing the next paragraph which stated that the person using the easement was 100% responsible for any damage that might be caused. They still balked, but my parents put a lien on their property that stayed there to the day they tried to sell, at which point they had to pay up or the purchaser's creditors wouldn't underwrite a mortgage. I think they had to pay interest too, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Shut down while trying to report a fire at my high school. When I was a senior back in high school in Middle Tennessee, we had a smoking area for the students. This was 1990, so yeah, I'm old. My daughters actually just asked me to post this story here. Anyway, so I was a good student and had a great reputation among the faculty at this school of about 2,000 students. During class, I am running an errand for a teacher when I walk by the smoking area. It is outside, of course, but it is against one of the buildings that has a roof over it like a carport. There is a large metal trash can in the middle, and it is on fire. Not a rip-roaring fire, but is on fire nonetheless. We have flames starting to work their way out of there and plenty of smoke. I decide I don't need to pull a fire alarm, but clearly I need to get a staff member to put this fire out. There is no one around, so I make a fast trot up to the main office. As I quickly enter, I see the secretary talking to another student. So with a loud voice, I say, Miss Knight, Miss Knight, there's a... And that's when the assistant principal rounds the corner behind Miss Knight while ripping into me about how we wait our turn in here, and how I am being disrespectful and loud and I need to stand there and wait until I am called forward. Okay. And then I just stood there while Miss Knight kept helping the other student, as Mr. Evil Assistant Principal stood over watch in the corner like a bouncer. Finally, after a few minutes, it was my turn. I calmly walked up to the counter and said, Miss Knight, the large trash can in the smoking area is on fire. The assistant principal yells out, What? And then burst out of the room while Miss Knight just gasped. I calmly turned around and walked out and went back to class. Alright guys, that's it for today's stories. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. And as usual, if you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Reddit content. So I'm out of here, take care and I'll see you next time.